Well, Dave, we're back here at the Jägermeister workbench and back hummingbirds once again. off the deep end. Hummingbird. Cool. Hummingbirds off the deep end. So let's that. talk a little bit about Kobe's day. Well, well, you know, the, the brown clown, we got a little uh, mount here of him. You get to see how big and powerful built he is, you know, and that's that's one of the reasons why we pursue him is because when you get him on, you know you got a big fish on. He's got a big broad tail, big stocky body like an amberjack. Right. You know, he's a a formidable opponent, so especially when we use like light spinning gear, which is what we're, we're fishing with. You know, we say it's, you know, 20, 30 pound. That's kind of, you know, light for me, but big for other, other fellows. So, no, I hear you. What we're going to be doing is uh, when these cobia come in during the springtime, they move from the wrecks. Most of the year they're on the wrecks offshore and the wrecks and the reefs. They're a bottom fish, and we catch them. You catch a lot of them just fishing with uh, even a, a big old uh, snapper rig right. or a grouper rig. You catch right. tons of cobias during the, the year for that. But when we start targeting them is during the springtime when they come really close into shore, they're doing their, their uh, spawning migration. And like Patty said, uh, up in the panhandle, they go from the east to the west. And we got a, right now they got a good southeast wind, which is just perfect. Cause if the wind blows into their face, they'll go down and you can't see them. And this is a sight fishery, even over here on the, on the east coast where we live, we're sight fishing them, swimming, you know, in a 30, 50 foot of water range, clear water. We're looking for them. You have to have a really good pair of sunglasses, and it's better if you can get high as you can up off the water. You know, the more elevation you get, the further you can see. And you can see that fish there, he's got these big pecs on him. Mm -hmm. He looks a lot like a shark. Right. A brown, you know, they're brown silhouette, and he looks a lot like a shark when he has those pecs out. So you'd be careful not to be throwing in your jigs, and you'll lose them to sharks. The sharks will eat a jig. Or All right, a, or so a, speaking of that, that's one of the things we're going to use. We're going right. to use a jig. Right, this is a, a bright colored Frank Hilton octopus jig. This uh, pretty much, I bought that up there at Half Hitch Tackle up in Destin. That's what all the boys are throwing, the same kind of stuff. This is a, a full jig instead of a half jig. Uh, means you can throw it a little further. You can see it's got a really strong hook on it. And that's the kind of hook you're going to need because that cobia, like I said, is really strong. It's like catching a big amberjack. And when you get a hold of the leader, that's when they get off a lot. And if you're if you're not using a thick enough hook, you can actually pull the hook and you know straighten out the hook because they fight really hard right close to the boat, all the way up to the boat. And that's one of their, you know, that's one of their big reputations is, you know, when you go to stick a cobia with a gaff or something, you better have a place to put it because he's going to put a whooping on you if you don't get him in the ice really quick. That's good. That's also a good suggestion. Now, Dave, they have a very rough mouth, as you know. Right. So what size leader do you think you can get away with? Obviously, well, clear you could water. Go, you could go down to 30 pound, but I would go, you know, 50, 60 pound leader, depending on the size of the fish you're catching. If you're catching 25, 30 pound Cobia, like the ones over here, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader will suffice because they, although they have a rough mouth, it's not really sharp teeth like a mackerel or something. And so what you're going to do is when you're using a live bait versus the jigs, you're going to want to use a circle hook and you want to use a, at least a 2X, you know, an 8 aught size about, you know, you can't really say 8 aught because circle hooks are all different sizes. Right. You want to try to match it to your bait. You don't want a giant hook hanging out the face of your eel or your mullet. You want to match it to the size of the bait. But you want to use a circle hook because, you know, even though we're wanting to keep these fish, sometimes you'll catch an undersized one and we want to let him go. And if we have enough in the boat, we can still keep catching them with the circle hooks and, and, and let them go, you know, if, if, if we've got enough. One last question. How do you like to eat them? Because I certainly do. Well, you know, I like them every way. I like them I probably grilled is probably my favorite way, but I also like them cubed up into like one inch chunks and deep fried. I mean, that's, you know, you fry a shoe, I'll eat it. I, I love just about anything fried, so As it's hard to beat a cobia fried. Great segment over here at the Hummingbird off the deep end. Yeah, you're I, I, I need to get up. I need to get up and see my brother and start yeah, you chasing do. him. That's what I need to do. All right, good job, bud. Cobia, that is. Hey, Bree, you got to keep this train rolling, so where are we going? I will.